Hello, my name's Brad Orr. I'm the chair of the physics department at the University of Michigan, and today we're going to talk about the physics of hockey. We're doing this because on December 11th, there's going to be a hockey game between the University of Michigan and Michigan State in the big house called the Big Chill. <clears throat> on that day, we're also going to be having a lecture on the physics of hockey in the physics department. We'll be talking about shooting, checking, and ice. At the core of hockey is ice. To form ice, you need water. Water is a wonderful substance found on Earth, is responsible for all of life, and it's unique. One of the unique things you see every day, actually. If you go to a party, you might be tailgating before the big chill, and you put your ice into your soft drink, you'll notice something about it right away. The ice floats. If this were almost any other substance, you would take the frozen material, it would sink in the glass. Now, why is it critical? If ice was a normal material, it would form at the bottom of the lake, and we have to be playing hockey with scuba gear on. But we don't. We play hockey on the surface. That is the critical part about ice floating. There's another part, however, that people had mistaken for hundreds of years what makes ice so slippery? They said, okay, I take a skate, I put it onto the rink, I step on it, I compress it, I've just formed water. This was the theory of why ice was slippery. We had a water layer on the ice for a long time. Turns out that is not the case. It is true that with pressure, ice will melt. Come on over with me, I'll show you an experiment. Here we have two experiments to show that pressure can melt ice. We have a very thin wire and a heavy weight cutting through this ice cube right now. And even though the ice cube is colder than 32 degrees, we're starting to see the wire cut into it. It's a very thin wire, very high pressure. Just as I said before, if you compress ice, you melt it. The thick wire, however, which is the thickness of a skate blade, is also trying to cut through the ice, and it's not being successful. And that is why the pressure melting of ice is not the correct theory for why ice is slippery. Now let me show you how what really is going on. So now we're going to talk about why ice is really slippery. What is really going on? So here we have a tray of ice and a hockey puck. And like everyone knows, the hockey puck slides on this ice nicely. Right? Is it just because the ice is smooth? Well, it's more than that. We have a very smooth surface here of glass, and the puck, the puck doesn't slide at all. So what's the difference between the water and the ice? The difference is that there is a layer of lubricant on the ice, and if I put a layer of lubricant on this glass, right, this is just ordinary Windex, and I smooth it out a bit. Okay. Now, it slides just like ice. The difference is we have a fluid layer on the glass. So here we have a crystal, and Everything that's above absolute zero shakes. And so this crystal shakes just the way ice is shaking. The key thing I want you to look at is how much we're shaking at the bottom and how much we're shaking at the surface. The bottom is not shaking very much, whereas the surface of the ice is shaking a lot. This is just what happens in ice. And in fact, this is the naturally occurring liquid layer on the crystal. It just occurs there because atoms shake. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do this model experiment and turn it into the real thing. We had our ice here, and now we have also ice. The difference is this ice has been cooled to liquid nitrogen to minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's make sure it's cold enough. Essentially what I'm doing is pouring liquid air onto my ice. What we're doing is we're freezing these top atoms. The question is, will a puck slide across this surface. And now the experiment. Doesn't slide very well. It's just like sliding the puck on the dry glass. Hockey is all about shooting and scoring. Today I'm going to demonstrate shooting a hockey puck and Sean is going to demonstrate stopping a hockey puck. So we have a piano across the room which is almost exactly the right size as a goal. Six feet by four feet. Sean's going to protect it. I'm going to score on him. We have a bow and arrow here and a special puck. And I'm going to shoot Sean with this and hopefully I'm going to score. Are you ready Sean? Yeah. Good save! 
So just what does this bow and arrow have to do with a hockey shot? A hockey stick is actually a very elastic object. When you take a shot, you bend your stick when you hit the puck, and actually good players will hit the ice first, bend their stick, store energy in it, then when you shoot it, it springs forward just the way a bow and arrow does. When you combine the strength of a player swinging the stick plus the elastic energy stored in this like the bow and arrow, a good hockey player can shoot at over 100 miles an hour. What that means for a goalie is that from the blue line, it takes less than half a second for that puck to get in the net. So now let me demonstrate how the stick actually stores the energy. Here we have the shaft of a stick. We're missing the blade, but we're going to put a hockey puck on it. And instead of me taking a slap shot, I'm going to bend this down and shoot the puck up into the air. I'll try to bend the stick down about six or seven inches. That's what a good hockey player can do. Hockey is a sport of collisions. Some collisions we want, like a stick hitting a puck. Other collisions we want to be careful about when a player hits the boards or where a puck hits a player. We want to take care about that and pad them so we, they don't get injured. I have an experiment here to show you how padding helps avoid injuries in hockey. One of the most important parts of a person to protect is his skull. Every hockey player is required to wear a helmet. The helmet is padded on the inside and we have an experiment here that shows you how padding will help with protect someone's skull. So an egg which has a hard outside and a soft inside is like your head. If we put it into this helmet, tuck in the chin strap, now we are going to have a collision. Let's strap our player in and load him up. Imagine these are the boards. We're now going to collide our hockey player into the boards. So look, the skull is fine and we have no concussion. Okay, so what happens if a person goes out to play hockey and doesn't put on his helmet? So now we're just going to put the egg and strap it in and this can happen very easily if you're on the ice and you fall over. Just when you're skating, your head will hit the ice. And it's a big problem. We can understand why padding protects us from a collision by going all the way back to Sir Isaac Newton. Newton told us that you experience a force when you change the momentum over some duration. So when I go into a check, I will be changing my velocity. I'll be stopping. The question is how fast I stop. I hope that you have enjoyed these discussions on physics and hockey. Hockey is the fastest sport. Physics is demonstrated all throughout the entire game. I hope when you're watching The Big Chill that you will see physics in every shot, every check, and every goal.